What is up, people of YouTube? I'm your host, Vernon. This is Hemingway Harbor. Let's fish that. All right, ladies and gents, if you follow my videos, you will know that I don't like doing the same thing week after week after week. And having caught quite a lot of trout lately, I wanted to do something different. And that is why I made my way out here to Lake Mead. I want to try doing something different again. But I also want to scratch a little itch. I'm interested in knowing what's the fishing like at Lake Mead at the moment. Are the stripers up shallow? Are the carp still feeding? As well as that, I've been getting quite a lot of questions from people asking, how do I know what fish to catch and when to catch them? And that is something I want to touch on on this video. But before we get to any of that, let's get some lines into the water. All right, so for today, we're going to start off simple. We're only going to have two rods out there. You're allowed to use two rods. I'm going to use two. And we're only going to be using some baits out there today. I'm not going to throw around some lures. The idea is throwing it out into the water and waiting for some fish to show up. On my first setup, I have a little Carolina rig with some anchovies. I've caught many stripers like this before, but having a little Carolina rig, it also might help to get some channel catfish. I'm gonna throw that out there. Hopefully we get something on the anchovies so we can see what's still feeding up shallow. And the second setup, that's gonna be my carp setup using some uh, pack bait. That's just some oats and corn and jello with some corn on the hooks and some marshmallow floaties just to lift it out of the grass and stuff on the bottom. This of course is for carp. I want to see if the carp is still feeding this particular spot next to the marina. It's quite flat area. It's not that deep. The entire shelf here. I'm thinking that's where we might find some of the carp. All right, so we got our anchovy rod out there on an automatic hook setter. If something pulls on that line, that rod will jump up. And on our second rod, that's the carp setup. We have a little policeman on there and an alarm. If something grabs the hooks and swims off, that thing will scream, letting us know we have a fish on. Now the idea of this, we're gonna soak these baits. We're gonna be out here the entire day. That's the thing about fishing in the winter. You have to have lots of time. It's not instant action like it is in the summer. It might take quite a while to get some fish. So we're gonna be soaking the baits out there. All right, ladies and gents, we now got our bait soaking out there. And that means I have some free time on my hands. And I want to use this time to quickly explain uh, how I decide what fish I'm targeting and when I'm targeting them. Now, the first thing you need to know is you can catch any fish year round. Of course, that's only if your rules and regulations allow it. If there's a closed season, you can't. But any fish can be targeted at any point during the year. Oftentimes, I will talk about carp and not feeding as good in winter but you can still catch them in winter. I've even seen some people doing uh, ice fishing through a hole for carp as well. But generally speaking, it's a lot easier to catch carp during the summer months as they are all cold blooded. And that just means they get their heat from the water. If the water warms up, their metabolism speed up and they need to eat more. And thus it's easier to catch them during the summer months, but you can catch them any time of the year. So knowing that you can catch fish any time, why do I have specific times? That's because there are certain behaviors and certain times where it's a lot easier to catch a specific fish. For instance, here at Lake Mead, typically March is the spawn season for the largemouth bass. They tend to come up shallow and you can get some really big bass up shallow. So it's a lot easier for a bank angler to catch a big largemouth bass during the spawn season. It is, however, important to release them. They need to get the new generation of bass out there but you can still find bass here in the winter. You're just gonna need a boat, go out into deeper waters. Typically, these fish go down into very deep waters. You need deep divers to go down to find the fish. You're gonna struggle finding the bigger bass up in the shallows. And that's the important thing. It's all these differences in the fish. You need to be thinking about that, thinking what are the fish doing? How am I gonna target them? Now, of course, some fish actually prefer the cold. That is why Winter is a great time for trout. Trout actually prefer colder water. That is why I'm typically, during the winter months, I'm targeting the trout. But also here at Lake Mead, stripers like the cooler water rather than the warm water. 
So typically striper action picks up during the winter as well. That is why I got some anchovies out there today to see whether there are stripers around. But over the last few years, the carp have been feeding way later into the year. Waters aren't that cool. That's why I got the carp rod out there as well. But typically this time of year, it takes a long while. The baits have to be soaking for quite a while before you get some action. And that is why I'm soaking the baits out there today. So another important factor in deciding what fish you want to target is the conditions out there and the location. Like I said, water temperatures are quite important. When the water gets cold, most fish tend to head into the deeper water. The deeper water is going to be warmer, whereas the shallow water tends to cool down. Whereas fish that like the cold water will come shallow and the ones that like warm water will go in deeper. But there are certain places, for instance, where the Las Vegas Creek runs into Lake Mead, that is 33 hole or government wash. The water coming from the creek is actually something like 65 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas Lake Mead water is typically something like 50 degrees. So that lot warmer water that comes in there, lots of fish will go for that space as well. So a lot of times you will find some feeding catfish, maybe carp and lots of bait fish heading to the bit warmer water. And of course, all the predators tend to follow them there as well. But I decided to come here to the marina today for the simple fact if you've ever been on the marina you will see that there are quite a lot of carp and stripers and catfish circling around the marina and I'm trying to get some baits in the water, draw them out, see if we can get some of them. So that's just a quick little explanation of how I tend to figure out what fish I want to be catching. I'm thinking about water temperatures, how the fish are behaving, where they are going to be and trying to find them. Of course, I'm no expert in this. I'm still trying to figure these things out as I go along. And that's the fun about fishing. Trying these things out, figuring it out. That is a large part of learning how to catch fish, is figuring these things out, when to get them. And oftentimes it takes a long while, lots of time spent out there trying to figure out where the fish are and what they want. But that's just a simple explanation. For now, we're soaking the baits and I'll bring you guys to any action if anything happens. Seeing quite a lot of movement on my little bobber, but unless that thing is screaming, we know the fish does not have the hook. So we'll just leave it there, wait for them to find our hooks. Now, of course, this can be some of the birds, maybe a little terrapin, busy sealing the baits. But seeing all this movement, if you bring in the baits you're going to move it from whatever is out there if it is a carp busy feeding we just have to wait for him to find our hooks this thing will scream it will take out line if the fish have the hook until then we leave it soaking while i'm talking to you guys we have two carp swimming right past my rods now this is in deeper but that just means that there are carp in this area and i just need to be patient it's going to take some time we will get some of them to go for our baits. All right, guys, it's been a little over an hour and a half. For the last hour, we've been getting quite a lot of hits on a little bobber. That thing's been moving up and down quite a lot, but no big takes, nothing pulling out line yet. So that is something that I will leave out there. That takes a long while. They're probably feeding on the little pack bait. It takes them a while to get to our corn. So that we're gonna leave soaking out there but our second rod, this one jumped up. This is the one of the anchovies, but it's not pulling, there's no fish on there. I think this was one of our little coots or one of the little cormorants or something that grabbed the little anchovy and that actually set off the rod, but there's no fish on there. So this one we're gonna rebait, recast, constantly trying to get some fresh baits out there to see if we get some fish. Whereas the other rod, we're gonna leave that one a couple of hours before we rebait him. All right, guys, we had our alarm scream and we have a fish on. Like I said, with the amount of carp swimming around here up shallow, it was only a matter of time. But let's not count our chickens before they hatch. We haven't landed this fish yet. And 
and in the winter time every catch you get might be the only one you get so it's very important to land the fish this isn't the biggest of carp I'm trying to force him away from our anchovy line seeing quite a few bigger ones swimming past But hey, not going to complain, we do have a fish on. This fish, the one eye, is very big. Don't know if it's some kind of disease or something. But I did bring my carp mat, so let's get him on the mat and we'll see. We also just had a hit on the other rod. Just wanted to set the hook on that thing. He will be busy fighting there. We'll quickly have a look at the carp. And there we are can see his eye is a bit bigger it stands out a lot more than it should so this is not the healthiest of fish so probably good that he got some of our feed but we're quickly gonna get the hook out and nice decent fish to get us started little carp let's get him back to the water you can see here from the top view this eye is a lot smaller that one is quite bulgy quite a big eye on him but let's get our fish back and off he goes thanks for biting little guy but let's quickly see what we have on the other rod this is of course on the anchovy Feels like it has some weight to it, so probably channel catfish. And indeed, first little channel cat for today. This is why I'm using the Carolina rig. Even if we don't get any stripers, you always have the chance of getting some catfish. So while we have the carp mat out there, let's get a little channel cat on that as well. And after two hours of not, after two hours getting little hits, not catching anything, we get two fish at the same time. There we go. Lovely little channel cat, lovely spots on him. Golden colors of all the channel cat spots. Let's get this guy back to the water. And off he goes. In quick succession, two fish landed. Still lots of time left, so let's get our baits back out there. And this is why I have the little policeman on there. You can see everything that's happening. <coughs> if we didn't have that policeman, we wouldn't know something's messing with the baits at the moment. But, like I said, we're not setting the hook while all this movement is going because we're not sure whether that fish has the hook yet. So unless that thing is screaming, we're not going to mess with it. This is, however, acting a bit weird, the way that it's constantly pulling. It might be a smaller fish, something like a small, small mouth or something, or maybe a terrapin busy messing with the baits. Where they're not grabbing it, and swimming off like carp do, they're just kind of messing around with it but because we're not sure we'll just leave it for a while see whether that thing starts screaming all right guys so this constant pulling and dropping has been going on for quite a while so either it's a small fish on the hook or there's no baits left in any case it's not setting off the alarm but i think it's about time we bring this in see what's going on
feel we have something on there. Not quite sure what yet. I think it might be around some bushes or something. You actually do have a carp on. Strange that he didn't set off the alarm. I think this one is a bit bigger than the first one. But weird that he's not trying to swim away with the bait, he's just sitting there. was one of the weirder takes from a carp that I've ever seen but hey at least we got another fish on this one has rather big head but he's quite skinny for the size of his head Let's see if we can get him on the carp mat have a better look at him there we go rather sizable carp like I said, he has a big head, but he's quite skinny. Let's quickly get those hooks out, see if maybe we can measure this fish. All right, so this is a six kilogram. That's a 14 pound carp. Not a bad one. A lot bigger than the first one we got. Decent fish. Let's get this guy back to the water. Just getting him back into the water with some oxygen. And off he goes. Very weird that such a big fish, I mean 14 pounds, 6 kilograms, that a fish like that will just lightly take the little baits, not even set off the alarm. But, good catch. That only took 40 minutes to get that fish, so I'm going to rebate, get a bait in the same area. There we go, another fish on. This one finally screamed. Just want to make sure my drag is loose enough. This fish needs to take out line. watching the bobber go up and down again for quite a while. So once again, I want to try and get him away from my other line. Ah, oh, he just popped off. I could feel the hooks pop. Or maybe not. I think he just went into some cover. Maybe that's what I felt. So we still have this fish on, at least we set off the second rod, no big deal. This fish is putting up a lot better fight than the previous ones. It's the weird thing about carp, they have a strange way of fighting. Not as powerful pound per pound as some of the smaller fish, but because they tend to get such a big size, it's a good, strong fight. They don't do crazy things like jump out of the water like bass do. You just get constant pulling and tugging. Powerful fish even though they're not as acrobatic or energetic. You can 
can see my bottom hook is missing. That's probably what I felt. We got wrapped around in some cover and the bottom hook broke off. But let's quickly land this fish. There we go. Smaller than the last one, bigger than the first one. Decent, strong fighting fish. Let's quickly get that hook out so we can get him back to the water as quick as possible. It is now exactly 1 p.m., meaning it took an hour to get this fish. Let's get him back to the water. Decent fish, a lot better looking than the first one. Nice and healthy. Let's get him back. And off he goes. Strong, quick kick, and he's off. So we've now been out here for four hours. We got four fish. That's not bad. We have the line pulling, but no alarm. So let's just set the hook. Let's see. We have a fish on there. Feels like it, feels heavy. But when, once again, very strange. The fish is not swimming off with the baits, just lightly picking it up, kind of staying in one position. Staying down and I'm feeling quite a lot of head shakes. And that is because we have a little channel catfish. A little channel cat on corn. Rather than going for the anchovies, we got a little catfish on corn. That might just explain why he didn't set off the alarm. I think he's maybe too small to pull enough line to quickly get him on the lip grips. There we are, channel catfish on corn. Not the intended target, but we got a little channel catfish. Let's get him back to the water. And off he goes. Catching some carp and catfish. That's something you would expect during the summer months, but I mean, it's December. And we're getting them. All right, ladies and gents, we still have two to three hours worth of daylight out there, but I scratched my little itch. I wanted to know what the fishing's like here at Lake Mead. Now, the stripers, maybe they're up shallow, but they're not around the marina area, perhaps in some other coves. But quite surprisingly, still a lot of carp swimming around up shallow. Now, this is surprising to me because December normally is when I say uh, I'm done with the carp fishing for the year. You're more likely to catch a call than a carp so that's normally when i pack away my carp stuff but clearly you can see that the carp are still up shallow they're still busy feeding and that just goes to show you always should have a look at what's happening right at the moment watch the water temperatures as is because it is cool enough to stock some trout but it is still warm enough for carp and catfish to still be feeding now as far as the question what fish should you target and when the highly philosophical answer would be uh, any fish go out there make your own adventure and catch fish but i do know that people asking these questions are people struggling to find fish so for that reason it's important to understand that you need to think about what the fish are doing are they going to be shallow are they going to be deep are they feeding are they hiding but the simple and sweet short answer would be target the fish that are willing to bite especially the ones being stocked meaning the trout if you can find some stripers target some stripers but simply put during winter i try and find some stripers or focus on the trout that they're stocking in summer month it's better to focus on the catfish being stocked and like i mentioned stuff like the carp you can get them year round but it's a lot easier during the summer months likewise stuff like bluegill it's a lot easier in the summer when these fish need to be feeding and something like bass for us bank anglers it's a lot easier to get them in the spring and during summer all right, but I hope this video helped some of you guys. If it did, please give me a little thumbs up or just give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. 
feel free to ask any questions down below in the comments if you've not yet subscribed to the channel consider doing so hit the big red subscribe button join my community all right guys but i had some weird catches out there today but it was fun doing so i want to thank you for following me and like always i'll see you next time